What's going on everyone? It's week one. I haven't made a video in quite some time, well aware of that. There's been a lot of things going on in the off season. I guess I just haven't, I've been waiting for this video to weigh in on preseason, on EJ Manuel, on CJ Spiller, whatever, all that stuff. We'll get to it, but first I just wanted to welcome you back. Uh, hopefully you are one of the many who have been with me for many years now, as I've been making these since 2009. Yeah, I think the first time I made one was for T.O.'s first game as a Bill. So if you've been there that long, thank you very much. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you get some enjoyment out of this. I'm just going to basically funnel all my thoughts about the Bills, about the Bears, and the matchup uh, into, into this video. And I try to keep it as concise as possible, but a lot of times it runs 10 to 15 minutes. Let's see. First thing, what are we talking about right now? Oh, EJ. He's terrible. Let's cut him. We have Kyle Orton. How soon will he play? Halftime by the Bears game? Maybe. Week 5? Week 8? After the bye? Week 9? Is he the quarterback of the future? Stop! E.J. Manuel has still only played 10 games in his career, and here we are. We're talking about giving up on him. This is like, when do we give up on E.J.? Can, can we give the guy a chance for crying out loud? He's played 10 games. Give the guy a shot. They barely ran the ball in the preseason. I know that he looked bad. I get that. He did not look good at all. He was not inspiring. But you're putting so much stock in the preseason. I, I, if you want to be worried about it, you can. I'm a little nervous about it. Because I would have liked to see more rhythm, more you know, chemistry between the receivers, guys not falling down, guys being in the right place. Even when Manuel made right throws, receivers were falling down. They were dropping passes. It, it, was, it was not good. I agree, it was not good. But don't put too much stock into preseason. Don't put too much stock into it. I understand where you're coming from. But I don't understand the thought process of wanting to just get rid of EJ now. Because he really hasn't played that much. And in the preseason, I don't have the exact numbers, and I should have the exact numbers, but I know going into the last game, going into the Detroit game, they had thrown the ball 75 times. EJ had thrown the ball 75 times. And CJ and Fred had a combined 37 carries. That's not going to stay. It's not going to stay that way. This team rushed for the fourth most yards in the league last year. They're going to run the football. They're not going to have a 2 to 1 pass to run ratio. It's not going to be 2 to 1. All right? It might be closer to 50 50. It's not going to be 2 to 1. So I'm not freaking out about that because they plan on running the football. The offensive line got better. We got Chantrell Henderson, who's looking, who basically, to me, is a first round pick. I know I talked about this in the draft review. He is a first round pick. He was just an idiot at some points in college. And you know what? He's got his head on straight now. And I love the pick. And I love him as a right tackle. I like moving Pierce inside. Quanjo struggling, obviously. Don't need to cut him yet to give him a shot. So I, don't get, I, I know, I get it. We've been losing for 15 years. But you, you just, when you have this much turnover at receiver, at, well, running back's been pretty steady lately. But at receiver, at quarterback, on the offensive line, which is getting steadier has been steadier, and most importantly, at coach. You just keep cycling through all these guys. They, they get rid of the guys that were in the old regime. They bring in their new guys. You're still seeing it. We got rid of Stevie Johnson. We got rid of TJ Graham. CJ Spiller might be gone after the season. We don't know about that yet. They're bringing in the guys they want. They're bringing in the Bryce Browns, the Mike Williams, the Sammy Watkins, those guys. They're, he's building his team. So it, it, it's, a lot of times it doesn't happen overnight. So this is what we're stuck with for now. And I think the Bills can still compete. I, is, what's their ceiling? 10-11 wins. Ceiling. I'm standing here right now. 10-11 wins. What's their floor? 5. 5-11, five I would say. And they can fall anywhere in between there. 
depending on injuries, quarterback play, obviously. But you got to give EJ a chance, guys. Let him have a week to prepare for a team where he's not just worrying about things like installation and getting on the same page, which obviously he still needs to do. But when they actually make a game plan, they use that game plan, they run the football a lot more. See what happens. Am I worried about Chicago? Yes, absolutely. I'm worried about them coming out and just looking so flat. And then, oh my God, Twitter will be fun next week if that happens. Oh, I can't stand. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't stand the complaining sometimes. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I cannot stand the way. I don't know if it's you necessarily watching this video, but people on Twitter and some people in the press and what have you just complain. Complain, complain, complain. And you know what? You have the right to do that because indirectly you pay their salaries. You have the right to boo them. You have the right to complain. But can you be happy about something? It's the kind of... You, 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 I can't stand the kind of people who look at that Watkins one-handed catch like this in training camp and they're like, oh, well, he wouldn't have had to do that if the throw was there. You're just the kind of people who are not going to be happy unless you're miserable. So save that. But we do play the Bears this week. Uh, they present a tough matchup on offense. It's a tough draw. It's a really tough draw to go to Chicago, where EJ has not looked good in the preseason. He's not looked good on the road last season. Tough draw to go into Chicago week one. Chicago, let's see. Where, where have they been? They're, they were terrible on defense last year. Terrible. 30th in the league and run, er, in, uh, runs. I'm thinking baseball, sorry guys, 30th in the league in points allowed, 30th in the league in yards allowed, they're bad, they lost their top two tacklers from last year, James Anderson and Major Wright, both gone, they lost their leading, their sack leader in Julius Peppers, he's gone, they replaced that with Jared Allen in the latter stages of his career, Lamar Houston, who I do like. And he certainly presents a tough matchup for Chantrell Henderson. That's something to keep an eye on. So is the pass rush there? I mean, they haven't. the Bears haven't looked good, in defensively at least, in the preseason. Do you think they're freaking out? Are their fans freaking out? I don't know. I'm worried about the pass rush, obviously, because obviously you know they're going to send guys because that's at least what's on film, you know, what gets to EJ is pressure. Kind of, he doesn't really, uh, he doesn't play well under it. And a lot of quarterbacks don't. So I'm a little nervous about that, obviously. Um, but, I mean, we can run on this defense. They gave up 2,500 yards of rushing last year. Over 6,300 yards total. 2,500 rushing. Run the ball. Run the ball, makes it easier to throw the ball, keep it simple. I know that that is a, a major complaint from a lot of fans and people around the league is that the Bills are too simple, They're too predictable. And you know what? They kind of are. And that's a reflection of coaching, but they had a rookie quarterback. Now you gotta, you gotta let the, gotta give them the reins a little bit. Let EJ... Do his thing. But run the football. That's important. Establish the run. Stop the run. Establish the run. Those are two major, major parts of this game. And especially this week. Because if the Bills can run the football, control the clock in Chicago, it certainly elevates their chances of winning. I don't think you can make that argument. In any game. You run the football, you control the clock, you have a better chance of winning. Protect the football. It's... I mean, it's, it's obvious. Those are obvious but crucial aspects of the game. Because we know what the Bears can do on offense. They might score quick. We don't know how Jim Schwartz's defense, we haven't really seen all the guys on the field at the same time. Gilmore, McKelvin, you know, Aaron Williams, Spikes. Sucks that Kiko's out, I know. Bradham's not playing. Worry about Preston Brown, Absolutely. Jeffrey and Marshall just pose really tough matchups. And uh, that's, I mean, 
that's got to be what's in your mind. What's on your mind? Gilmore and McKelvin have a really tall task right off the bat on the road against a receiving tandem who caught 189 passes, over 2,700 yards, and 19 touchdowns last year. That's what you got to stop. And how does that? St- how do you do that? Well, you can't let them establish the run with Matt Forte, who's one of the best threats on the ground and in the passing game in the league. He's one of the best dual threat running backs in the league. Who else is a better dual threat? Jamal Charles, LaShawn McCoy? Is that it? I think so. No particular one or two, but McCoy, Charles, Forte is absolutely, at, at worst, the third best dual threat running back. He caught 74 passes last year. Had nine, uh, over 1,900 all-purpose yards. 12 touchdowns. You guy's a baller. Can't let him get loose. That opens things up for Cutler. And we know Cutler can be an interception machine. We know Cutler can turn this ball over. We've seen him do it. How does he do it? Pressure. We've seen the Packers get after him. We've seen... A lot, of, I mean, a lot of teams get after him. That's what you do. I remember when the Giants got after him on Monday Night Football and they sack him 12 times or something like that. Packers get after him all the time. That's how you disrupt him. He forces the ball, makes Aaron throws, puts himself really in bad situations and his team. The last two games under Cutler, the Bears have been outscored 87-39. to 39. They got wrecked by Philadelphia. They were 8-6. and six. They got wrecked by Philadelphia, and then they lost at home to Green Bay and gave away the division and their season, basically. They were 5-6 and six under Cutler last year, 3-3 three and three at home. Average margin of victory under Cutler at home last year was three points. Granted, those games were early in the season, but this game is early in the season. We don't know how far Cutler has come from his injury and what have you, but I do know he's lost his last two starts. The Green Bay and Philadelphia. Are the Bills as good as those teams? Probably not. But I don't see why they can't give Cutler similar issues. I'm... Like I said, I'm nervous about it. I'm nervous about the Bills coming out looking flat, getting just throttled. But I was nervous about that when they played the Chiefs in 2011. Completely different team, yes. But they throttled the Chiefs. Is that on the table? Could I see the Bills blowing out the Bears? Probably not, but the Bears are really bad on defense. And if the Bills are as good on defense as we think they are, the Bills held quarterbacks to the second lowest QBR in the league last year. Behind Seattle, who won the Super Bowl. So we need that continuity. I know that might be a reflection of Patton, but you got to have faith in this defense. You have to. That, I mean, if, if the Bills do anything this year, it'll be because they're as good or better than they were on defense last year. I know they lost Jarris Bird to free agency. I know they lost Kiko, their leading tackler. But they have leadership guys. Corey Graham comes in. Brandon Spikes comes in. Those are guys who have been in winning programs, and they understand what it takes. They really do. I guess it's prediction time. Bills on opening day against the Bears. What do you guys think? I want to hear what you think. I'm going to pick the Bills to lose right now. It's Wednesday. And I'm trying to be as realistic as possible here. I Don't get me wrong. On Sunday, I'm going to wake up sure that the Bills are going to win. Sure that something's going to go right. They're going to win. I just know it. But I th- I'm going to pick them right now to lose 30-21. to 30-21 to 21 Bears. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. I think that the Bears will be able to move the ball against the Bills defense that, um, you know, was pretty, like I said, pretty good last year. It's just really tough against those receivers. I don't know if EJ is going to be great. I'm optimistic about him this season, but... Um, they might come out of the gate and struggle a little bit. Anyway, guys, give me your input. Please tweet me, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Facebook, if you got it, find me. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming this far into the video. Uh, 
it's week one, so get ready, get excited for a long, nice long season. I said nice long season, because hopefully it's longer than what we're accustomed to, meaning it goes into January. Anyway, like I said, guys, thanks for coming this far in the video. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you this week and all season. Make sure you enjoy the game on Sunday, and best of all, go Bills!